Cricket Love Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Joe Weatherly here at Southampton at GS Bowl. Joe, how's it going? Yeah, all good. Really excited to get uh, get going with the season. It's only a couple of weeks away. It's been a long winter um, training and yeah, we're not far away from an exciting summer. Looking forward to it. Yeah, so Joe, you're going to show us some of your skills, a batting masterclass, a demonstration of most of the shots as a batter in cricket. Before we get into the video, let's talk a little bit about your career to date. You came through the ranks here at Hampshire. Run us through it. Yeah, so homegrown lads. I'm only 15, 20 minutes away from the ground. Um, played for Hampshire for the first time at nine years old uh, in the under 10s. Came through the age group system, loved it. Um, got picked up in the Hampshire Academy. Got looked after by some great coaches here at Hampshire. Um, and then progressed through into the uh, professional ranks. And uh, this is my eighth year coming as a professional. So it's flown by, absolutely loved it. And, um, you know, Hampshire's my home um, and love representing them. You've also had time skippering the England under-19 side. How was that as an experience? Yeah, brilliant. It was down under in Australia. Um, it was like a mini Ashes under-19 series. The test match was at the Wacker. Um, and, you know, skippering some really... Good players that have since played for England, you know, Haseep Amid, Sam Curran, you know, Mason Crane. It was a really talented side. So uh, I absolutely loved that experience. It shaped me a lot as a cricketer and, um, you know, I want to hopefully be captain of Hampshire one day. And as you said, at the top, this is a, we're, an interview that we're doing just at the start of the season, 2022 season. What are your short term goals for this season and the, and the next few years ahead? Uh, well, we had a really good season last year. Um, you know, we were really close to winning the championship and, you know, winning the T20 Blast. Um, I had a good white ball year last year. Really want to kick on with my red ball. You know, opening the batting is quite tough in England, um, but I really want to have a, a really successful uh, red ball year at the top of the order and also continue that white ball form, you know, looking to play in the 100 this year um, and continue that form in the Blast. And then longer term, you know, I want to play for England, absolutely. Um, White ball or red ball, definitely, definitely want to play for England and also play in, in franchise leagues around the world. But it's just the start and um, hopefully it's just around the corner. As we said, this is going to be a little coaching video for youngsters watching this. What was your main tip that you'd give them ahead of it? Oh, I'll just try everything. Like We're going to run through, I think, some shots today. Just enjoy it. You can't, you can't fail. It's all just learning. Um, yeah, absolutely. Get down your local cricket club as a batsman. Just try loads of different shots, see what you're good at, see what you're not so good at um, and work out what's best for you. But most importantly, enjoy it. Joe, perfect. Can't wait to get into this. The batting masterclass. Let's go. OK, so looking to take stance, it's obviously preferable or dependent on, on your strengths and weaknesses, what, what guards you take. I like to take a middle, middle and off guard, particularly to right arm fast bowlers, because that allows my head to be on off stump and to judge line really well, whether to play or whether to leave. If it's maybe a left arm bowler, I might come slightly this side of the ball, maybe open my stance up a little bit, maybe come on to middle or so, but it's really depending on your strengths and weaknesses. Obviously, when you're staying leg side of the ball, you might open up the off side a little bit more to cut and to drive. Some top order batters are particularly strong off their legs, so they might let's take middle and off or off stump. Okay, so starting with the forward defence, obviously the bowler's best ball, challenging top of off, challenging a really good area. As batters, we want to combat that by uh, getting good sort of weight transfer into the ball, starting with the head, getting out to that top of off position, leading with the head, good stride in, and presenting the full face of the bat back to the bowler, and hopefully hitting the middle of the bat to combat their best ball and trying to stay in for as long as possible. So you obviously want to stay in a relatively side on position, Obviously your bat's good wanting to come down straight alongside your pad to act as a second line of defence. Your top half's really engaged, your top hand's really engaged. It's obviously a front foot shot presenting the full face of the bat back to the bowler. So in England it's obviously really important to play the ball nice and late. You want to play it underneath your eyes. The minute you get out in front that's when we might nick the ball, we might miss it and it might hit our pad. So it's really important to play it nice and softly with soft hands, nice and late so that any nicks do go down or might go for four. Um, and that's really important in England. Okay, so the back foot defence is obviously still a defensive shot, but it's obviously a bit shorter length from the bowlers. Uh, to combat that as a batter, we want to get almost back and across and to present the full face back to the bowler. It's obviously top of off or just shorter than that. 
we want to get that back and across movement, presenting the full face, head still over the ball but in a back foot position. So that back and across movement is really important because we need to decide whether to play or to leave. We want to ride the bounce really well, again playing with soft hands, making sure the ball goes down off the bat face and the edges don't carry. Really riding the ball well, that's obviously important when there's bouncing wickets in Australia and getting in that position there. So I'd say the key to the back foot defence is obviously you're still looking to get into the ball, you're still looking to get forward. As soon as you pick up that the length's slightly shorter, you're looking to get forward and that's when you get that back and across movement. And you're looking to pick up the line and the length of the ball, obviously. And the length's really important to adjust. If it does bounce on you, you can get onto your toes and ride the bounce. Just like the same, if it keeps a bit low, you're in that position to just adjust the ball. And if it gets too big, you might drop your hands and leave. Okay, obviously in England, you want to judge the line really carefully. If it's sort of targeting towards the stumps, off stump, we're looking to play. But there are times when it just leaves us and it's really important to leave the ball if it's outside our eye line. So a lot of us will start on sort of middle, middle and off with our head on off stump. As soon as we get an indication that it's slightly wider, sort of fourth or fifth stump, that's our cue. We're looking to play, we're looking to play. And then we leave it and let it go through to the keeper. What we don't want is to play away from our body where we're out of our control and that's when we tend to nick it. So it's really important, front and back foot, that when it's outside our eye line, but it's still in a half decent area, that we have the leave in our armory. So our head position starts on off stump. We're obviously looking to get that movement back into the ball, to looking to play. And then sometimes, as I say, the ball leaves us. Some batters choose to leave like that. Some batters choose to leave like this. Some batters are looking to play and then actually just withdraw the bat. Marcus Strasgothic was a really good example of he's looking just to play the line, but actually the ball is two or three ball widths outside of our eye line. But the key is having a really still head, you're looking to play, and then when you judge that it's sort of outside your right eye, that's your cue to leave, or leave, or leave. So just like playing and leaving, it's really important to pick up the line of the ball. Obviously, if it's straighter but slightly over pitch, you want to be looking to play an on drive. Just like you are if it's on off stump or four stump, you might be looking to play a straight drive or a slight offside, to, uh, offside drive to mid off. Or if it's a little bit wider but over pitched, a nice cover drive. So that weight transfer is really important. So that head needs to go first to get into the ball. The foot follows and you're looking to make contact underneath your eyes to hit the ball into the ground with a nice straight bat and the ball should bounce just in front of you so that you're fully in control of the shot and your weight's over the ball like that. So with the lofter drive, it's no different in terms of the body position and the shape to a normal drive. We're just looking to make contact that little bit earlier, looking to go aerial, over mid off or over mid on. Again, that weight transfer is really important, that head position, picking up the line and length of the ball. And we're just looking to make contact a little bit earlier on the up, but keeping our shape really nicely so that we're really in control of the shot. So we play the lofted drive, probably if, we've, if we're in, if we're sort of on 30 or 40, maybe mid on or mid off or up and we're looking to put something back on the bowler, put a bit of pressure on them. We see it's sort of slightly pitched up and we can play the same almost risk-free drive but slightly in the air, simply over the bowler's head, over mid on or mid off, but with a straight bat. So back foot punch is obviously similar to the back foot defence. We're looking to get forward, but then we move that back and across movement onto off stump or fourth stump and we're looking to simply punch the ball just in front of square on the offside. Our body weight's still good, it's still over the ball. We're not looking to hit the ball too hard, but we're just looking to hit the ball into the ground just in front of us, and it should go for four along the square with a straight bat. So back foot punch is a shot that often suits sort of taller players. It's really important to ride that bounce. Sometimes if it bounces on us, we get up on our toes, that body weight is still really important. We're ready to adjust if it keeps low or bounces high with our hands to ride that bounce. 
but we're still looking to make really good contact and to not try and hit it too hard, like that. So the hook shot's when the bowler digs the ball in, it's short of a length. We're still looking to get forward, but then when we see it short, we're looking to get our hands out and out to the ball like so. We're looking to play it with a cross bat shot, we're looking to ride the bounce, we're looking to roll our wrists on impact to keep it down, or to go up and over the infield like so. It's really important we go out to meet the ball, to make contact about a metre in front of us, and to finish off the shot, but we're staying balanced at all times on the front foot. So the pull shot is again a ball that's sort of dug in by the bowlers when they've got a bit of pace. We're looking to get forward, but it's slightly back of a length, and it's an attacking shot that we want to put back onto the bowler. It's typically sort of chest height, and we're looking to meet the ball out in front. Our head's still going to the ball, our body weight's going forward, and we're looking to extend our arms like so and hit it towards mid-wicket and square leg. People play the uh, pull shot slightly differently. Some people really play it off the, off the front foot and go and meet the ball, especially if the bowler's not, not rapid. So like a KP would be a good example of someone who went out to get the ball off the front foot. Some people like to get a back and across movement and play it slightly later off the back foot. So the cut shot's a back foot shot as well, played to a slightly uh, wider ball. We're looking for that width when the bowlers get slightly too wide. Again, we're looking for a slight movement back and across to get closer to the ball off to off stump. And we're looking to hit the ball square on the offside, get a nice shoulder turn with that left side and come across the ball like that. We're still in control of the shot, our, our, our head and our face is over the ball. We want to really let the ball come, hitting it late, directly under our eyes, and it should go for four either side of point. So there are different ways to play the cut. Some people play a little late cut that might go slightly further behind square, and depending on where point is, you can manipulate the shot to hit it in front of square, on square, slightly behind square, or even a late cut, where there's often, when there's not a third man in, it's often a high, high reward shot with relatively low risk. Okay, so the uppercut is when the ball's dug in short of a length. Again, we're looking to get on the front foot, but we then press back and we're looking to play a late cut over the slips or over third man. And we're looking to get a bit of leverage on the ball. We're looking to play it nice and late behind us and almost not trying to hit it too hard, but adding pace onto the ball and playing it like that. Okay, for the leg glance, it's a uh, highly productive area for top order batters. Again, we're looking to pick up the line of the ball and we're playing this shot to a ball that's slightly too straight on the line of our pads. We're looking to get a good stride into the ball like, like our drives. We're looking to play it nice and late with a straight bat and then turning our wrists on it as the ball gets closer to us. So it's on the line of our legs, playing with a straight bat and we're just turning the wrists, getting high value for it in mid-wicket and square leg. Okay, so the sweep shot we're playing to spinners. We want to get nice and low, looking to pick up length early. When we see it's on a good length to a stock ball, we want to get a good stride in with our head. We're looking to get nice and low, and we want to make contact really out in front of us with a nice forward lean of our body shape. We're looking to make contact on the half volley or even on the full and it's a shot around our front leg, finishing off like that. The key to the shot is staying nice and low, rolling our wrists on impact, keeping it along the ground, but getting out in front of our front toe. Okay, the reverse sweep is really important to manipulate the field. So often we only have one man behind, one man behind square on the offside, and we're looking to manipulate the field. So what's really important with the reverse sweep is we get slightly this side of the ball. We change our hands a little bit from there to there. And then it's the same as the sweep. We're looking to get nice and low, pick the length early. When we see it's roughly on a good length, we're looking to get a little press with our head, 
get out to reach the ball, get out in front and to meet the ball out in front like that. Again, it's a shot across our body. We're looking to get nice rhythm with our hands and play it like that. Okay, slog sweep's really similar to the normal sweep. We're just looking to hit it in the air to clear deep mid wicket, often hitting it for four or six. But it's still the same movement. We're starting nice and low. We're getting a nice little push forward with our heads. We're looking to pick line and length early. And we're looking to get out, out in front. And we're looking to play the ball in the air with that swing there. Okay, so the switch here, similar to the reverse sweep, is all about manipulating the field. Sometimes we have a point inside the ring and it might be beneficial to hit it over that man for maximum reward for four or six. With the switch hit, I tend to cross my feet over. So I take my stance normally and then take a left-handed stance. I turn my grip a little bit, just like I do with the reverse sweep. And it's the same motion as the slog sweep. Okay, so the scoop is a one-day shot. Again, we're looking to premeditate this shot. We're gonna get a little movement back and across and get almost front on to the bowler. So we start in a side-on position. We move before the ball's bowled, just before the ball's bowled into a front-on position. We change our hands from a traditional grip to almost like a frying pan. And we're in this position here. We're then looking to beat the keeper or fine leg just behind us there by just getting enough bat on ball to use the pace and hit it away for four or six. The key is using the pace, not doing too much with your hands, but staying out in front and just simply using the pace. If the bowler follows you, you're looking to go this way, but if you're good enough, you could almost go that way as well. So we're looking to get straight on to the bowler our left foot is in line with the stumps. We're looking to use the pace that way. But if they do follow us and they see us go and they go wider, being good enough to go that way as well. Okay, so the key to spin is either getting right out to the ball or right back. Sometimes when we get right out to the ball, to get the ball before it spins on the half volley, we can use our feet. So again, just like the sweeps, we're looking to get a nice low position, pick line and length really early. We're then looking to use our feet. So we forward press, we then click our heels like so, and we get into this position where we're a yard or two down the crease. We can then access the ball in front of our eyes and choose to hit it wherever we want, whether that's through mid on or mid off. But we've used our feet to create that leverage. So that first step's really important. So we get that initial press in straight down the wicket and then we use these next two steps to decide where we go. So we get that first big stride in. If we're looking to get the ball through the offside, we might get, give ourselves room and stay this side of the ball. If we're looking to go through the leg side, we get that initial, that movement's the same, that first movement. If we're looking to go through the leg side, these next two steps determine where we want to hit the ball. So that first stride's the really important one. And then these next two are deciding where the ball's going to go.